Well, hi there. This is Tyrannosaurus Rex, probably the best known of all dinosaurs. This is Spinosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Velociraptor, and Carnotaurus. Dinosaurs you probably know. If you're a fan of Jurassic Park, it's one good sequel or, you know, any of its other four sequels. I'd be happy to explain that comment in a future video if you like. If you're pretty into dinosaurs, you probably know about Allosaurus, Deinonychus, Utahraptor, and a handful of other cool theropod dinosaurs. But how many more are there that you don't know about? How much do you not know about this, the coolest of all dinosaur groups? Like, how many fingers do they have? I mean, most of them have three. T-Rex famously has two, but some of my theropod toys growing up had, had more, more than three. Though they were not very high quality toys, so I chalked it up to them being made by the same people that make, well, Halloween animal decorations. But then one day I was looking at the diminutive little hands of one of my favorite dinosaurs, Carnotaurus, and I noticed something shocking. Four fingers. Four tiny little fingers. What the heck? And suddenly, everything I thought I knew about one of my favorite dinosaurs and my favorite group of dinosaurs was suddenly all in question. As much as I love them, maybe I hardly know anything at all about theropods. And while we're talking about controversial topics, like how many decent Jurassic Park sequels there are, let's jump into one of the biggest controversies in theropod biology, Herrerasaurids. What are they? Well, they are bipedal carnivores with three long fingers with claws and a hinged mandible. A theropod, right? I mean, if you saw one, you would almost certainly conclude that it was a theropod. Of course, if you saw a marsupial mole or a golden mole, you would probably think that was a mole. You'd be wrong, but who would have guessed they were more closely related to kangaroos and elephants, respectively? Because there are some weird things about Herrerasaurids. Things that make us wonder not only if they are actually theropods, but if they are even dinosaurs. Because not all ancient reptiles are dinosaurs. And this one, while it looks pretty much like a theropod, at closer inspection, it doesn't look like any other dinosaurs at all. For example, it only has two sacral vertebrae. This is typical of archosaurs, including modern crocodilians, but dinosaurs, including theropods, tend to have more than that. And nearly all dinosaurs are identifiable by their hip morphologies. Specifically, dinosaurs can generally be identified by a perforate acetabulum. The acetabulum being the place where the head of the femur meets up with the pelvis, essentially a hip socket, made where the ilium, ischium, and pubis bones come together. With a perforate acetabulum, what this means is that um, there's a hole. You can stick your hand right through the pelvis of a dinosaur where the hip joints would attach. Almost all dinosaurs had a perforate acetabulum, unless it was subsequently filled in, such as with ankylosaurs. While Dinosauria is a group based on shared ancestry, not necessarily shared morphology, this perforate acetabulum is one of the best ways to identify a dinosaur from their close relatives and other archosaurs by examining skeletal remains alone. Dinosaurs, crocodilomorphs, and pterosaurs were the only archosaurs to survive the end Triassic mass extinction. But during the Triassic, the time when the dinosaurs first appeared and when the herrerasaurs existed, there were all sorts of non-dinosaur archosaurs, including the closest non-dinosaur relatives to the dinosaurs that have ever existed. This means that when examining fossils of Triassic archosaurs, a close examination of the hip morphology is really valuable in identifying early dinosaurs. And Herrerasaurs do not have fully perforated acetabulums. So the fact is that while Herrerasaurs appear at a glance to be early theropods, upon closer examination, it becomes a lot less clear exactly what they are. We've only just begun to touch on the anatomical oddities present in this group. As a result, some paleontologists have concluded that Herrerasaurs were early theropods. Others that they represent a group of theropod relatives, but that diverged before the theropods evolved. Others that they are part of the early sauropodomorph lineage, like the carnivorous and bipedal Eoraptor, which is also from Triassic South America. Sauropodomorpha has historically been considered sister to the theropods in the Saurischia. 
And though later sauropodomorphs tend to be giant, long-necked herbivores, in the beginning, many of them weren't so different from their theropodomorph cousins. But some paleontologists think that herrerasaurs represent a group of sauriscians that diverged before the split between the theropod and sauropod lineage, meaning that they wouldn't belong to either major division within the saurischia, though they would still be part of the saurischia. Others think that they are ornithischians. And some think that they aren't even dinosaurs, but represent a different clade of archosaurs that diverged from the dinosaur lineage before dinosaurs ever evolved. The take home is that all of the other theropods are more closely related to one another than they are to the herrerasaurids. And it is possible that herrerasaurids are not only the outgroup among the theropods, but possibly to the theropods as a group, to the saurischians, or even the dinosauria as a whole. They go here on the phylogeny. The only question is whether Theropoda begins here or here. Well, maybe not the only question. Because that first node could represent the last common ancestors of all theropods, or all saurischians, or dinosaurs, or some larger group of dinosauromorphs. So the real take home is that we still have a lot of questions about the Herrerasauridae. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge, and you might be trying to pick the perfect Christmas gift this year, and that can be tough. But Ridge makes like the perfect gift. And we have so many colors that there's gotta be one for everybody. Like, say your favorite relative who's always got their head in the clouds. Or the Fonz, Donald Trump, the hiker, the gearhead, a stormtrooper, Darth Vader, my mom, Anakin Skywalker. Needed the high ground. A samurai, another hiker, a medieval knight, a koala, that guy from the video with the full on double rainbow, your straight laced, no nonsense father, one of the members of Blue Man Group, and Hyperlime! In case you have somebody who can't ever find their stuff. These wallets aren't just awesome looking, but they're designed with RFID blocking materials that protect you from digital pickpocketers. Check out the holiday sale at ridge.com slash Clint. You can save up to 30% on selected products until December 20th. And hey, using my link gives you a shot at a Ridge bundle worth $4,000. No purchase necessary. The Ridge team is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 99 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it, but you probably will love it. Let's get back to the video. The first group of what are more clearly theropods would be this, Eodromaeus. Eodromaeus, like the Herrerasaurids and the aforementioned basal sauropodomorph Eoraptor, is from Triassic South America. Eodromaeus, unlike Herrerasaurids, which grew as large as about 6 meters, were considerably smaller at just a touch over 1 meter, about 4 feet, and probably only weighed as much as a small dog. Basically a Gus Gus sized dinosaur. And just like that, I really want one. Like most dinosaurs, Eodromaeus had an ant orbital fenestra, which is this hole right here between the orbit and the nares, the nodes. And like other theropods, and herrerasaurids, whether or not they're theropods, they have a small hole in front of the ant orbital fenestra, which is called a promaxillary fenestra. You can see why the herrerasaurids are so tricksy. They really look like theropods, except for in all of the ways that they don't look like theropods at all. Weirdly for a dinosaur, and even for an archosaur, but similar to Eoraptor, Eodromaeus had little teeth on its palate. Now, I told you before that the Herrerasaurids had three long clawed fingers, and this is true. But like most dinosaurs, though not most theropods, it actually had five total fingers. Two were just relatively small and lacked claws. Well, Eodromaeus was the same way. They're like two little vestigial fingers. Dinosaurs had to go from five fingers to three or to somehow. And it turns out that the early theropods still had all five. This is also one of the best running archosaurs in the whole Triassic. And unless you're a super hardcore theropod fanatic, I bet this is the first time you've heard of them. And here's another one that you've probably never heard of, Daemonosaurus. This is yet another Triassic archosaur that is probably a theropod. It was probably about the size of a coyote, though we know it only from a few fossils of its neck and head, so maybe it was the size of a T-Rex, but with a tiny little noggin. We don't really know. Well, that, that seems pretty unlikely. What weren't tiny were its teeth. It had a short, tall head like Carnotaurus, but with crazy huge teeth. It didn't have a lot of teeth, 
but the ones it had were enormous. It also had very large eyes for its size. I said earlier that it's probably a theropod. Obviously, we don't even have a pelvis to see if it had a perforate acetabulum, but there are some features of the skull that are more similar to Herrerasaurids or even Ornithischians than they are to most theropods. So we're placing them here as early theropods, but there's a heck of a lot that we don't know about these guys. Like, how many fingers they had. And the last group of ambiguous theropods that we should probably discuss before we get into the more clear-cut theropods and the clade Neotheropoda would be this guy, Tawa. One quick similarity that you may have noticed between Tawa and Daemonosaurus, as well as a lot of the early Neotheropods that we will discuss soon, is a kink in the jaw where the premaxilla and the maxilla bones meet. This kink has no teeth. It's a space, a diastema, like what you see in rodents, lagomorphs, and diprotodont marsupials. Well, this kink with a diastema is fairly characteristic of early theropods. So that is part of the reason that we think that these guys were basal theropods and not something else. Tawa is another roughly coyote-sized dinosaur, but with a head much more like that of Coelophysis, which we will discuss next. And, as best I can tell from the limited amount of information available, it seems to have had three large fingers and two tiny ones, like many of the lineages we've seen so far. Now, all of the lineages that we've discussed to this point went extinct at the end of the Triassic. Because the Triassic is one of the most insane times in the history of life on Earth. It started with a great extinction event, which left the world wide open for the few surviving lineages to diversify in all kinds of crazy ways. And it ended with another mass extinction. So most of those crazy life forms were found in the Triassic and only in the Triassic. And most people have no idea that they ever existed at all. That is why the Triassic is getting its own video later this month, in case you need a reason to subscribe and click the little bell. But you've probably noticed that we haven't discussed any of the best-known theropods yet, so you know that there's more. And that is because one single theropod lineage survived the end Triassic mass extinction, and that lineage is generally known as the Neotheropoda. That is, as long as you include the Coelophysoidea in the Neotheropoda. Some phylogenies place them just outside. But no matter what you call it, this is the lineage that survived the end Triassic mass extinction. No others did. And of all of the lineages in that clade, the Coelophysoidea are the group least related to all of the others. Coelophysoids were found in the Triassic, but also into the early Jurassic. You will see this as a common trend for many of the early Neotheropods. Some Coelophysoids that you may know include Coelophysis, for which the group is named, as well as Procomsignathus of Jurassic Park fame, and Dracoraptor, though, you know, this group is actually way bigger than that still, and it might need its own video eventually. These guys were generally slender, but varied in size from about one meter to around six meters in length, so they got pretty big for the Triassic especially, and even into the early Jurassic. They show that characteristic notch and diastema between the premaxilla and the maxilla, and four fingers, three large and one small. And this is the first group that we've discussed to have near global distribution, though the Herrerasaurids did get outside of South America, where dinosaurs likely originated, and spread at least to North America and Africa. While nothing from this point on is controversial when it comes to whether or not it's a theropod, this next group is one that has been classified in a lot of ways within the Neotheropoda. It's honestly one of those groups that I would like to dig into in a big way. You need to understand that building phylogenies is much more difficult when you are dealing with limited numbers of often incomplete fossils than when you have living and dead specimens to examine and molecular analysis as possible. So take everything with a grain of salt, but be sympathetic. Some questions are harder to answer than others. But this group would be the family Dilophosauridae. This family includes dinosaurs like Dilophosaurus and Dracovenator. And if you want a skull to show that premaxilla maxillary kink and diastema, get one of these. And then, and then send it to me, please. You probably know Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park, where they did Dilophosaurus dirty. And not just because it didn't have the kink and diastema. And not because they gave it a frill that it didn't have and made it spit poison. 
but because they made it so tiny. Maybe they were juveniles, but Dilophosaurus was one of the biggest and most deadly carnivores of the early Jurassic. It was 7 meters long and weighed 400 kilos. That's the size of a horse. You don't play fetch with that. Well, unless you don't have your glasses. You don't realize what you're up against. But at least they had the head crests, which are a pretty good indicator that it is a member of this group. Though our understanding of their exact shapes has changed in recent years. And there are some other groups with some pretty good Dilophosaurus-like head crests. But Dilophosaurus is definitely a beautiful, but probably more deadly than depicted addition to Jurassic Park. Oh, and it had four fingers, three large clawed fingers and one small finger. To this point, every lineage we have discussed went extinct by the latter part of the early Jurassic and had more than three fingers. I've been trying to figure out why so many theropod lineages went extinct during the Jurassic. It sounds like there are a few hypotheses out there, but the big picture is that we really don't know. What we do know is that when major extinction events occur, that leaves room for the remaining lineages to diversify in strange and awesome new ways. And the one remaining theropod lineage seems to have done just that. Because while we have discussed some rad theropod groups already, a strong argument can be made that the best is yet to come. All of the theropods that survived the Intriassic and this early Jurassic mass extinctions all fall into one clade. The Ave Rostra, the bird-faced theropods. I really don't get this name, but unlike the bird-hipped dinosaurs, at least the bird-faced theropods includes the actual birds. Anyway, the bird-faced theropods were the only theropods that survived past the early Jurassic. And both major lineages within the bird-faced theropods, the Ceratosauria and the Tetanure, both survived into the Cretaceous as well. Some are still alive today. Now, interestingly enough, though I was familiar with Dilophosaurus and Coelophysis as a kid, I had never noticed that they had more than three fingers. My Jurassic Park toys of these dinosaurs only had three. But some of my really cheap theropod toys, like the kind you get from the arcade and the dollar store, some of those theropods had more than three. Of course, they also stood upright and balanced on their tails. They were garbage. But when it came to putting the correct number of fingers on theropods, it turns out that they were better than my Jurassic Park toys. You see, many of them had horns on their noses. I really didn't know what they were supposed to be, but it turned out that they were members of a group that I only barely knew to exist as a kid. Ceratosauria, the horned lizards, which aren't lizards, but they did have horns. And I really only knew of this group, a group that honestly needs its own video, from two genera, Ceratosaurus and a dinosaur that is often vied for the title of my favorite of all, Carnotaurus. Now, I never really paid that much attention to Ceratosaurus. I just knew that it existed. But I would say that of all of the dinosaurs, Carnotaurus was the one that I drew the third most, just behind T-Rex and Velociraptor, which, as we all know, is not actually a Velociraptor. But I mostly just drew Carnotaurus's head. That head is so cool with those tall, short jaws and those large horns over the eyes. It's, it's just such a rad dinosaur. And for some reason, I always assumed that it had two fingers like T-Rex. I mean, its arms make T-Rex look like it had huge arms. But one day, I was looking closely at my son Owen's toy Carnotaurus, and I noticed something odd. Four fingers. This was on a Jurassic World toy. While Jurassic World is worse than Jurassic Park in almost every other way, their theropod toys do have the right number of fingers. Something Jurassic Park cannot consistently boast. Coelophysis and Dilophosaurus. And it has Chris Pratt, and Chris Pratt makes nothing worse. Carnotaurus had the smallest arms proportionally of any large theropod, and yet it did have four fingers. The four fingers typical of Ceratosauria as a whole. They all have them, no matter how small their arms. If you find a theropod with four fingers at any point after the early Jurassic, you probably know what you have. Especially if it has horns, a shortened face, and reduced arms, which became more prevalent in the Cretaceous. And that is true even if it has no teeth, but a beak instead. This is a rad group of theropods that I didn't know too much about until way too recently. If you want to see a whole video about them sooner than later, please let me know in the comments. But right now, we have finally arrived somewhere very important. We have arrived at the clade of theropods that contains the biggest land carnivore the world has ever seen. 
And I'm not talking just about Giganotosaurus, though I am talking about Giganotosaurus and its cousins, some of which are bigger than Giganotosaurus. The clade Tetanurae, the stiff tails, which are identifiable by their stiff tails, and the fact that for the first time among the theropods, they have three fingers. This is the three-fingered clade. The fact that all of the smaller clades all have more than three fingers and only this clade has three kind of reminds me of how most of the snake clades have legs. But the Colubroides do not, so we tend to think of snakes as being legless. Anyway, we have finally found the three-fingered theropods. And this is a spectacularly rad clade indeed. In my opinion, the coolest clade of dinosaurs in existence, except for the larger clades that encapsulate it. I mean, it has Giganotosaurus, T-Rex, Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, and, and Velociraptor, and I'm just getting warmed up. This group contains most of the known theropods, which makes sense for a couple of reasons. First, with the exception of the Ceratosauria, all of the other theropod lineages sprung up and went extinct in less than 60 million years. But the bird-faced dinosaurs, the Ceratosauria, and this group, the Tetanurae, not only existed, but were the dominant land predators for well over 100 million years. And to top that, they existed much more recently than did the other theropod lineages, so their fossils are more likely to be found. I mean, T-Rex is closer to being your contemporary than it is to living at the same time as any of the non-bird-faced theropods. This group definitely needs its own video. In fact, it already has two, and one more, coming later this dinosaur December. And though the phylogeny of this group is extensive and somewhat contentious, I'm gonna dig into it a bit anyway because, well, it's just too cool. And remember to take the exact relationships with a grain of salt. These clades are just always gonna be changing and they will always be somewhat contentious. But currently, there are two major clades of stiff-tailed theropods. The Carnosauria, the meat-eating lizards, and the Coelurosauria, the hollow-tailed lizards. As well as a few smaller groups that we'll dig into if we do a more detailed video into this group in the future. And both groups have their own candidates for the biggest land carnivore the world has ever seen. I add in land because we covered multiple larger carnivores in this video from November. And frankly, I think the largest carnivore the world has ever seen is still alive today. But on land, the biggest carnivore the world has ever seen is probably in one of these two clades, at least as far as we know. But before we dig into that, I just wanna ask you the most important question in the world. What's your favorite dinosaur? If you wanna have this conversation with everyone you come across, you should totally grab this shirt. We'll have a link down in the description. It is one of my favorite shirts that I've ever owned. All right, let's start with the Carnosauria. As most of the contenders for the biggest land carnivore are in this group. Carnosaurs can be identified by their very large eyes relative to their body size, long and narrow skulls, and a femur that is longer than the tibia bone. Okay, so their upper leg is longer than their shin. This clade existed from the Middle Jurassic until a little over halfway through the Cretaceous. Though there are a few groups which may be Carnosaurs that survived until the end of the Cretaceous. I should mention that formerly, Carnosauria was a polyphyletic garbage bin of large carnivorous archosaurs. Notice that I didn't say dinosaurs because some of the animals dumped into this bin were, well, they weren't even dinosaurs. We'll be talking about some of these non-dinosaur giant predators when we talk about the Triassic, so don't miss that. But Carnosauria was basically the crustacea of archosaurs. But like the crustaceans, or the pancrustacea specifically, today, Carnosauria does represent what appears to be a monophyletic clade. This clade includes a lot of small groups like Monolophosaurus, which had a single crest on its head but isn't actually at all closely related to Dilophosaurus, in case you were wondering. But of the large families, the most distantly related from among the Carnosauria are the Spinosaurids. And if you're into Spinosaurids, I have great news. We'll be diving into this family in extreme detail later this dinosaur December, so buckle up. For now, I'll tell you that this is a very unique group that has been found on almost every continent and seemed to be at its peak in the early to mid Cretaceous. 
Now, Carnosauria is known for its long, narrow skulls, but these, these are the gharials of Carnosaurus. Like gharials, they tend also to have conical teeth, as opposed to the serrated teeth more typical of theropods. Their jaw articulation was very interesting, and I think well demonstrated by the PNSO models that we have here. We'll have links to where you can get your own down in the description. But you see how there's this notch in the upper jaw where the big teeth from the lower jaw fit when the jaw is closed? It's a bit like what you see with crocodiles, but maybe even more extreme. Also, their nostrils were farther up on the head, like, like those of early whales. And in general, they have many adaptations more typical of the aquatic, marine, and semi-aquatic animals that we see today, namely whales and crocodilians. Many also had large sails reminiscent of, well, Dimetrodon, which, as we discussed last Dinosaur December, is not a dinosaur at all. They had three fingers on their hands, and the first finger had a huge claw. And as for being huge, the whole group well, they were all very large. The largest of them all being a legitimate contender for being the biggest land carnivore the world has ever seen, Spinosaurus, which was at least the longest we have ever discovered, at 14 meters, about 46 feet. That's longer than the longest school buses. And it weighed something like 7,400 kilos, which is over 16,000 pounds. But like I said, we'll be getting into much more detail on this group later this month. So click that little bell. But we have a lot of ground left to cover. Because the next major family to branch off from the Carnosauria are the Megalosaurids, the big lizards. Which, like all dinosaurs, are not lizards. But they were big, especially for the Jurassic. These guys seem to thrive during the middle to late Jurassic, especially in Europe, though they are also found in the Americas, Africa, and possibly Asia as well. The largest of them all was probably Torvosaurus, at 10 to 11 meters, up to about 36 feet, and weighing as much as 5,000 kilos, roughly 11,000 pounds. No contender for the biggest land predator the world has ever seen, but in the late Jurassic, it might have been. Megalosaurids can be identified from other carnosaurs most easily by their lack of head ornamentation that's typical in the remaining groups. And while their jaws are long and thin, roughly three times as long as they are tall, they are nothing like those of the Spinosaurids. The remaining major families of carnosaurs fall into the single clade Allosauroidea, which are again characterized by their significant head crests. This group includes the families Piatnitz Caesoridae, Metria Canthosauridae, Allosauridae, like this amazing Allosaurus fragilis sent to us by Art by Ans, Neovenatoridae, and Carcharodontosauridae. This group also needs its own video. Maybe a series of videos, because this group of Middle Jurassic to Late Cretaceous theropods contains some of the largest and most well-known theropods of them all. Plus a lot of their closest relatives that you should probably know about. Including the dinosaur Dr. Grant seems to think is the biggest carnivore the world has ever seen the giant Carcharodontosaurid Giganotosaurus, which was not as long as Spinosaurus, though close at 12 to 13 meters, 39 to 43 feet, but it was likely heavier, with some estimates being as much as 13,800 kilos, over 30,000 pounds, which would be nearly twice the weight of Spinosaurus, though many experts think those weights are greatly overestimated. Some estimates put them at just 4,200 kilos, or just a touch over 9,000 pounds, which would be just barely more than half the weight of Spinosaurus. We just don't have a lot of fossils to work with, and those that we do have are largely fragmentary. They were big, but probably not the biggest the world has ever seen. And not just because Spinosaurus might have been a bigger carnosaur, but because the largest theropod of them all probably wasn't a carnosaur at all. It was probably a member of this group, the Coelurosauria, my personal favorite clade, as evidenced by the fact that we have already made two videos about its members, and I'm probably not done. It not only contains some of the coolest dinosaurs of them all, but it is a really diverse and interesting group. Most of the feathered dinosaurs that we have found, they're in this group. It contains both T-Rex and Velociraptor, as well as Agala, Agala, uh, Gallimimus, and the only dinosaur lineage alive today, among others. And it's time to talk about them because they're, uh, flocking this way. As previously mentioned, Coelurosauria means hollow-tailed lizards. 
These still aren't lizards. They are identifiable because they are proper members of the Tetanure, thus they have three or fewer fingers and stiff tails. But in the case of the Coelurosauria, the tibia is longer than the femur. Remember it was the other way around with the Carnosauria. That alone is enough to identify a Coelurosaur, though there are a few other attributes you could look for like a curved ulna and a longer sacrum. But if you have a theropod with three or fewer fingers and shins longer than its thighs, it's probably a Coelurosaur. And this is very likely to be the case if you find a feathered dinosaur, though there is evidence that not all Coelurosaurs were feathered, at least not completely. There is strong evidence that the last common ancestors of the Coelurosaurs were omnivores, and that is likely responsible for some of the amazing diversity of this group. It has omnivores, as well as carnivores like T. rex, herbivores like Therizinosaurus, and everything in between. One whole group went toothless. Some were tiny, like the Compsognathids, not to be confused with Procompsognathus, which are Coelophysids and aren't closely related, nor did they live at the same time. Others are huge, perhaps even being well, the largest of all theropods. So let's start with the largest group, the Tyrannosauroidea, as they are the most distantly related of the major Coelurosaur clades. Many of you that are familiar with this channel know that we have already done a deep dive into the Tyrannosauridae. And one of the questions that we were exploring last Dinosaur December when we made that video is which was the smallest of the Tyrannosaurids. And ever since then, I have been getting continual comments on that video asking, well, what about you, Tyrannus? What about Moros Intrepidus? I thought it was Guanlong. And while all of these may have been smaller than the smallest Tyrannosaurids, they weren't Tyrannosaurids, but they were Tyrannosauroids, which is a much larger group. Tyrannosauridae is just a tiny part of it. Well. Tiny might be the wrong term, but they're just a small fraction of the Tyrannosauroid genera. So this group certainly needs its own video. I'm pretty sure this won't be the last Dinosaur December. Anyway, early Tyrannosauroids, like those mentioned earlier, were very small, like the size of a Komodo dragon. But as we moved into the Cretaceous, especially the late Cretaceous, they became increasingly enormous. This group can be identified by many hip features, but also many of the skull features that we discussed in our video on the Tyrannosaurids. Namely, fused nasal bones, the, the front premaxillary teeth have a D-shaped cross section, and the premaxillary bone, which is this one at the very front of the snout, is also, well, it's very tall giving the snout a very blunt end. The largest of them all was also likely the largest of the theropods and, dare I say it, the biggest land carnivore the world has ever seen. Tyrannosaurus rex, the tyrant lizard king. Though the longest known individual is only 13 meters, 43 feet long, which is shorter than Spinosaurus, possibly even shorter than Giganotosaurus, length isn't everything. Conservative estimates place Tyrannosaurus at almost 8,900 kilos, over 19,000 pounds. That's bigger than Spinosaurus, but smaller than the controversial high-end estimates for Giganotosaurus. However, new size estimates place T. rex closer to 15,000 kilos, 33,000 pounds. That's considerably bigger than even the most outlandish sized estimates for Giganotosaurus. And with jaws so powerful that they would shatter the dainty little teeth of Giganotosaurus. Who would win? T. rex, hands down. Now it's funny because the next major group to branch off were much, much smaller. As in, they were the size of a chicken. Compsognathids were tiny, still clearly identifiable as Coelurosaurs, just tiny. Generally highly feathered, though they had some scales as well. They're generally identified by careful examination of the hand bones, the metacarpals. And there is some debate as to whether many members of this clade are actually juveniles from other Coelurosaur groups. The next group has to be one of the strangest of all theropod clades the Ornithomimosauria, the bird mimic lizards, which are actually much closer to being lizard mimic birds than the other way around. Though basal members of the clade had small teeth, those teeth are lost in favor of a toothless beak in later groups, such as Struthiomimus and Gallimimus. They were heavily feathered and looked basically like an ostrich with three-fingered hands and long tails. And that brings us 
to one of the coolest theropod groups of them all. The hand thieves of the clade Maniraptora. A clade that we've already discussed in great detail in our first and most popular non-avian dinosaur video ever. And given that this is already an epic video, the link is right there. And we'll release a supercut of this video and that one in the next few months, just in case you're frustrated that you have to go over there to get the Manny Raptora. But what should we cover next? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. And I just want to say thank you to all of these people who, through their generosity, have helped us to create content like this. This, making videos like this is not easy. It's not easy for any of us. It takes a lot of work and these people genuinely make it possible. If you would like to see more content like this in the future, please consider supporting us on Patreon as well. <laughs> You're probably wondering how to pronounce a Gigantosaurus. I would be happy to teach you how to pronounce all things perfectly correctly. <laughs> In English? We're setting out to be carbon neutral. Like Gigantosaurus! You are looking at Julian's pronunciation guide where we look at how Thank you, pronounce. Julian, for your pronunciation guide on how to pronounce a Gigantosaurus. We are looking at how to pronounce this is his up. name as well as how to say more interesting but often. This is not all that helpful. Okay, I think we will go with the Clenty pronunciation. <laughs> you can notice, all right? Okay. Okay. We have, we have a moment where somebody's not playing the guitar. Okay. And there's not a <clears throat> train and not a helicopter <clears throat> and not a freaking. Well, if you would just be quiet, <laughs> we can do it. Uh, Clint, can you say that funky word for me one more time? Sidlerosaur? It sound it like legit sounds like you're just slurring your words. Slurosaur. <laughs> Officer, I'm just doing a video about slurosaurs. I don't know why you think I'm slurring my words.